Good morning, Deify here, and welcome back to Katawa Shoujo, where, as I believe I mentioned at the end of the last video, I think we're at a very big turning point of determining which route we're going to take. Um, you know, pretty much right here. I think this might be one of them, so honestly, I'm just, I just want to stop talking and jump right on into this. The school is a beehive of activity, but nobody pays me any heed. I saunter past classrooms filled with students frantically doing this and that, buzzing around like little worker bees. You wouldn't guess the school day is over. Uh, maybe I'm not. I thought it was a hallway decision, so I could just be, you know, totally wrong like I always seem to be. It's a bit quieter outside, but not by much. People zip by left and right, hurrying as quickly as they can busy and energetic. I feel the opposite. The midday sun seems to be draining all of the spirit out of my body, making it feel limp all over. Warm soft air flows inside my shirt, feeling like a cushion. I yawn lazily, <sighs> thinking about what I'd do. I'll drop off my books at the dorms first, and then something I haven't decided yet. Actually, maybe this is it. Maybe Kenji is in his room. Maybe not that! Maybe not that! On the way to the dorms, I spot Emmy coming my way, running, despite not having those weird prosthetics on. I wave at her, and she skids to a stop. Yo, he sow! Spatters of white and green paint adorn her nose and chin respectively, but her smile is wide, as it seems it always is. She leans in closer to me, amplifying the feeling she is examining me. What you doing? Uh, nothing really. I don't have anything to do for the festival, and everyone else seems to be doing something important. That's perfect! Then you can help me and Rin! With the festival preparations? Uh, I'm not sure I would be much of help. That's fine. I'm not much help either. Emmy grabs my wrist and starts dragging me back inside the school quite forcefully. Even her walking speed is more like jogging, making me stumble over myself, simply trying to keep up. The stairs slow Emmy down a little bit. Maybe it's hard to climb with her legs, or maybe she's finally out of breath. We go all the way back to the third floor into the seniors' hallway, ending up where I had left five minutes ago. I could just as well have stayed here waiting for Emmy had I known. So are you... Uh, is Dean working on that mural still? That's right. She needs all kinds of paints and brushes and stuff, so I went to get them from the art classroom. And you need me to help with that. Well, Nadine told me you had already helped her, so I thought you wouldn't mind. I see. You know, honestly, I can't argue with that logic. It makes a little too much sense. So thanks to Emmy's flaky logic, here I am again, collecting stuff from the art classroom for other people. Honestly, I have no idea when we get to decide. Is the decision that I thought sent you on Emmy's route just the first on Emmy's route? No! We need to have more time to determine, like, there's gotta be a pivotal one that determines which girl we go hang out with, right? Because I could have sworn there was like one where it's like, ah, I don't know what I'm gonna do today, and then there's like one where it's like, oh, I could go to the library, or I could go, ooh, maybe that's once it's determined, because it might be between Hanako or Lily, rather than Hanako and Lily, or another pair, hmm. Maybe I'm just not there yet. I don't know what's happening. The room is empty, apart from ourselves and the lonely specks of dust floating in the air. Emmy skips straight away to the back wall, digging out a tiny, crumpled piece of paper from her pocket. While she tries to make sense of the scrawled handwriting, I take a closer look at the materials lying around here. Dozens of paint cans and bottles are arranged on the shelves, in a most unorganized fashion. Some look like they've been left there for several decades, relics of previous art club generations. Next to the heavy stacks of neatly piled drawing paper are boxes full of different sized brushes and unsorted crayons. The smells of paint, turpentine, and fresh paper float in the stale air, mixing in my nostrils uh, to form that unmistakable scent of art. Arty. Emmy studies her notes, comparing them to markings on the various paint cans, and passes them to me as she finds the correct matches. She stretches her neck to look on the topmost shelf, but it's not quite enough. Her eye level stays below the shelf no matter what she does. Emmy gives up and just looks up at the shelf longingly, like a child at a toy store huffing in annoyance. Hmm. 
After a moment of building anger, she starts jumping up and down, apparently trying to speed read the labels during the fraction of a second she can see them, and catch what she can. It's no surprise that she fails miserably, and almost manages to bring the entire shelf crashing down. Now I see why me lending a hand here would be useful. Ugh. Come on, let me do that. You can't jump high enough, and I don't want you to hurt yourself trying. Also, I'm like twice your height. You're like, what, 4'8", and I'm like, what? 9-4? Yeah, that's right. 9-4. You are not! She turns around, flaring scorn, flushed cheeks and, all, cheeks and all. Just kidding, just kidding. Anyway, I'll look up there, okay? She glares at me one more time, but can't come up with a retort. With a grudging humph, she turns her back to me. So I begin scrounging around the top shelf for paint for a while, or while below, Emmy crouches to scavenge what she can from the cupboards. I shake my head a little after double checking to ensure she can't see me do so. Emmy having a complex about her height was a surprise. I wouldn't have joked about it. Otherwise. She seems easygoing, but I guess everyone has their weak spots. Only after we have almost all the items collected and spread out on a desk like a treasure hunter's spoils do I realize that it wasn't necessarily the height jab that got her riled up. She might not like to be told that she can do something. Like jump. Or read paint can labels in half a second. Maybe she's just a really bad reader. Whoa. But Emmy seems to have forgotten all about it already. Quick to anger, quick to forgive. Is she that type of person? At least she doesn't seem to have taken anything to heart, as she chatters away happily while we pick up the rest of the items and then make our way back to Rin. I chivalrously, <laughs> milady, carry the bulk of the materials as we make our way towards the dormitories. Rin is really stressed about getting her painting done. It's her own fault though, she should have started earlier. Is she going to make it? No idea. It looks good to me, but with Rin, you never really know what's going on. I found her this morning lying in front of the, the dorm in a fetal position. She hadn't slept all night. I can't believe that the night nurses hadn't found her. And now she's painting again like crazy. Yeah, I've noticed that she comes off as kind of unhinged, so to speak. Emmy giggles at that, as well as my likely too obvious awkwardness. I don't mind it. She's just a little weird sometimes. On that, I can agree with her. Unlike me, Emmy seems to be cool with Breen's... whatever it is that feels so off about her. Still, they don't feel close like Misha and Shizune do, with them working as a single entity sometimes. Or sorry, that's not that's not a sentence. That, there is a period there. With them working as a single entity sometimes, it's hard to say where one ends and the other begins. Even though they're so different, just like Emmy and Rin are. And Rin is the most different of them all. Different from anyone else I've met. Yeah, I guess she's a very unique person. I return to that word again, as if it encompasses Rin's personality by itself. But really, it's just a substitute for a lengthy description of her oddities. Emmy giggles as I grasp about for a properly descriptive word. She's just weird. You know, earlier she just spent half an hour sitting on her box and stared at her toes. She giggles again in a way that makes me think she doesn't know what's funny about it. It just is. All that time. The working area is a mess, but the mural itself has taken over even more of the wall since I last saw it. Uh, looks about the same to me. Sorry, Sal, buddy. <laughs> the disfigured human figures... <laughs> the disfigured human figures have been mostly colored in tones of red, pink, and orange. Weird, imaginary. Things populating the spaces in between. It looks... nice. I can't think of any word that would describe the work concisely and comprehensively, so I settle myself on a nondescript. Nice. But honestly, it seems that the area around the wall becomes untidier at the same rate as the mural progresses. The ground is littered with dozens of paint cans, various art supplies, and empty soda bottles. Rin herself is in the center of this chaos, standing there looking very cozy, as if it was a natural part of the scene. 
Her pant legs have been rolled up to her knees, exposing her thin legs which sport a drying spectrum of war paintings, similar to those on Emmy's face. Emmy sprints to Reen ahead of me and gleefully jumps in front of her. I'm back! That was fast. Did you run in the corridors again? He Sao helped me. Emmy points victoriously at me. Hoo Get the point in frame. There we go. <laughs> Reen turns around following Emmy's finger with her eyes, looking at my general direction. She nods absentmindedly at me. She looks like she hasn't slept since last night. A vacant, glazed stare that's focused slightly off me, and movements like in a slow-motion movie. Hello, Hisao. Thank you for the help. Yeah, don't mention it. I just did. Never mind. Looks like you've made progress. Looking good, as far as I can tell. That's bad luck, Hisao. Stop. <laughs> yeah, but now you get more bad luck. I know, but I'm willing to take the risk. That's a very nice thing to say. For me. Of course. Not for you. This is why artists are always unlucky. They have to constantly look at their unfinished paintings. So artists can't find romance, their favorite TV shows are cancelled, or they die young because of an unspecified disease. It's a deep and mysterious law of the universe. Unless they're blind. She considers this for a while, looking like she's going to fall asleep. I could sleep right now, yeah. There's a boy. At the art club, you see. Blind boy. So he doesn't. See. E, you already told me. I glance sideways at Emmy, and she glances back in a way that tells me she has heard this one before, too. That face, though. <laughs> yeah, that's the face I, I would make as well. <laughs> Neither of us says anything to Dean, though. So she continues her monotone soliloquy like an unfunny stand-up comedian. He should become an artist. No bad luck. Guaranteed. Don't you think that would be a good idea? That only blind people should become artists? Uh, no, not as such. You might have a point. Abandoning this train of thought, she turns again to consider her work, and starts humming a tune that I think I recognize, but can't remember the name of. I'm trying to think of a funny joke song right now, but I really can't. Like, uh, Yankee Doodle Dandy or something. Emmy arranges the supplies we brought and moves a few paint cans around, trying to bring some organization to the scene. Emmy, I need the Prussian blue paint. W which one's Prussian blue? She is staring helplessly at seven or eight cans, each with a different tone of blue. It's the one with Prussian blue paint in it. Jeez, Brin, you're not helping at all! I look around as well, even though I don't know what Prussian blue looks like either. Uh, I wonder what blue has to do with Prussia. Or what Prussia even is. The name sounds vaguely familiar, but I can't place it. While none of the blues look more Prussian than the others, the small print on the labels is legible enough to determine that none say anything about the contents being Prussian. There is no Prussian blue here. Emmy heaves a sigh. I guess I have to go back and get some. I promised to help with our class project, though, so I'll be back a bit later. Can you manage without it for a few hours? Rin nods, and so Emmy leaves. Awkward. Oh, maybe not. No. He so seems to like it. I stay because I like watching Rin paint, and because I have nothing better to do. You always say that. Just let me tell you what to do, and it will be all good. I sit on a box and pick up today's book from my bag. It's a story about three guys drinking beer for two weeks straight and doing little else. Are you reading my autobiography? Oh, wait, no, that requires having two other people to drink beer with. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> Dean moves from the spot that was in need of the blue and starts slowly working on another. Her foot works the brush steadily against the plastered wall. Layers of paint on top of layers of paint, the mural slowly gains more form. I turn the pages at a leisurely pace. In this chapter, they are drinking beer at the protagonist's friend's place. In the previous one, it was the protagonist's own apartment. It's not a page-turner kind of book, a slice of someone's imaginary life that makes me wonder why it had to be written. Why, indeed. The reason for doing something creative. It's something incomprehensible. Like why Rin does paintings. It feels like she and Emmy are the same, 
going squarely against their fates as if it's just out of spite. Dean even said something like that. Do something you can't just because you can. Is that what she meant? Is that her reason? It might be Emmy's. She comes off as quite a headstrong person. Dean doesn't give off that kind of air. Thinking about it, she doesn't give off any kind of air. Or maybe a different kind every time I talk to her? Why did she say what she said? Why does she, or anyone at all, paint, or draw, or sculpt, or write? I've never had much of a creative impulse, so I don't think I can really understand it. it makes me feel hollow inside. What a grim thought. I can't really decide whether it's true or not, either. Am I content being this way? I can't deny I'm feeling a little bit envious of Reed, but I can't really consider it a flaw of any kind. I'm myself, and she is herself. Still, I did this like, little kid screaming bloody murder out in the pool. Oh, I really hope at our new apartment we're like at least two buildings away from the pool and not right next door. <laughs> Still, I do need to find something. Something that could make me feel a little less lost about myself instead of just drowning myself in these books as I did in the hospital. I can't help but feel disoriented. The new school, lifestyle, and people around me contribute heavily to this sensation. I'm trying my best to fit into existing social circles, and most of the people I've met have been really nice. It still feels like I'm an outsider, though. Like I don't belong. I shake the feeling off, realizing that I'm spacing out. I have neither turned a page of the book, nor done anything for Dean. She's trying to pour some paint from a big can using only her feet, having not bothered to ask me. Or maybe she did and I didn't hear it. Either way, it looks very unstable. I quickly jump to help her, as it looks like she's about to spill the entire contents of the can all over the pavement. I take the can from her feet and pour some in the bowl. She doesn't say anything, and neither do I. I catch a glimpse of her eyes, looking silently at me from under her unkempt bangs. It's an unreadable expression. A perfect poker face, mixed with a hint of something like a mild surprise. I wonder what she's thinking. Maybe she's wondering about what I'm thinking. Maybe nothing. A uh, penny for your thoughts? Do you have any pennies with you? I don't think I do. Then I don't think I will tell. I'm not thinking anything either, so you're in luck. Except now I just did. She frowns, looking very unsatisfied. It's hard to not think about anything, but it's important. I'm about to ask why it's important when some old guy walks up to us, looking like he has some business with the Dean. Ooh, are we meeting the art teacher? Yeah, we are. Well, good afternoon. How's it going? <laughs> Been waiting to do this guy's voice forever. I thought he was only on the Dean route, though. I can make it. Dean doesn't take her eyes off the wall and responds so naturally that I can only assume they know each other. I haven't seen the man before, so I naturally wonder who he might be. Maybe a teacher? His hair is faded to a silvery gray, so much so that it looks artificially dyed. I hope that's not the case. Dude looks like an anime protagonist. Well, antagonist. Small, round glasses hang on the bridge of his nose, but it appears he's constantly looking over the lenses rather than through them. He's studying the mural intently over his glasses. Good, good! What bold composition you have here! He moves to inspect the mural closer, talking to himself about it in a way that makes it obvious he wants us to hear it too. Very good, very good indeed. I don't really know what to make of it, but Dean doesn't seem to care much. She's looking around her working space, the various bowls of different tones scattered all over. He out. Hmm? A little more of this. Yeah, give me a second. I pour a 50-50 mix of two paints into the bowl to create more of the same pale pink tone Dean was using to fill up the shape of the man's face. Dean watches me doing so, which makes me feel nervous somehow. Her face is so unassuming that it feels she's just waiting for me to do something wrong. The man turns to reckon me as well, looking surprised as if he noticed my presence only just now. Maybe he did. Why, hello there! Who might you be? Ah, I'm a transfer student to class 3-3. Hisao Nakai, nice to meet you. Muto's class, eh? Well, I won't hold that against you. He, <laughs> he laughs very loudly, obnoxiously loudly, like me. I've been told to have a very obnoxious laugh sometimes. A few small birds take flight from a nearby tree. 
I'm Shinichi Nomiya, the art teacher. He kind of sounds like a pirate now. I try to go for like pompous and I'm getting pirate. I kind of dig it though. I've got the like the voice I want in my head, but it doesn't come out right. And sometimes that's that's fun. I like it right now. So this is the art teacher. In retrospect, should have guessed that much. He even looks like one as far as first impressions go. How did you come up to end up How did you come to end up assisting my protege? I wish I knew. All right. Well, looks like we uh, got a good decision here. This one might be what determines if we go the Dean route, which uh, hmm, I think it's fair to say right now, not not the one I'm going for. So if this is the one, I think now you know I'm not going the Dean route. So I think I just kind of stuck with her. I think I keep wondering that myself. Lack of anything better to do, probably. Oof, that hurts. He lets out a hearty laugh, then checks his watch. I really must take my leave now. Tezuka, I'm pleased to see that this little project is going so well. I just stopped by to remind you to not run off by yourself tomorrow. I've invited certain people to the festival for you, and I'm sure they'd like to meet you as well. Also, Monday's club meeting is off, since I'm going out of town. I guess you kids can do something among yourselves if you want to. He leaves, turning around flamboyantly, then walking off as dramatically as it's possible to walk. Oh, are we talking like the Vince McMahon walk in the GIF where he's like, is it Vince McMahon? Or is it, uh, no, it's the younger one. It's it's Shane, isn't it? No, no, that doesn't sound like, I gotta look this up. Vince McMahon walk. That's all you need to search. Then you go to images. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wait, where's the GIF? There we go. Oh, yeah. To instantly get a job walking to the interview like this. You should look it up. Vince McMahon walk. That's just Vince and then McMahon, M-C-M-A-H-O-N. He's got some good arm movement going on there. It's quite exciting. I should close that from behind my screen, though. I don't need to see that the entire time. What a weird teacher. I'll be off, too. See you around, Dean. Holding up a hand, I turn to go up the stairs to the dorms. Maybe if I can finish reading these books today, the entirety of tomorrow will be free for the festival. That's... that's not... what we... there's gotta be more, right? I feel... there's... there's gotta be more! We can't have the festival right... I feel like I haven't made my decision, and that worries me a little. Where did I go wrong? Did I go wrong? I'm gonna need to backtrack and figure out where I went wrong. If I went wrong. <laughs> The next day, I wake up feeling a little lightheaded. It's almost noon already. Sleeping late is fine since it's a Sunday and there are no classes. Not just a Sunday, though, but the festival as well. From my window, I can already see some people at the soba booth slinging noodles onto plates for people with a craving for low-quality food. I throw back a handful of my morning meds and ponder how to spend the day. How oh, have I gone wrong? There will be a few others in the coming weeks, but I don't consider those as ominous as others, so I'm not worried about them, as I probably should be. With no urgent obligations regarding education, I should be free to spend the day at the festival as I like. Finishing my morning routine, I exit the hallway, intending to go out and find something to eat. Passing by his door... Oh god, no, I've done something wrong! Passing by his door, I decide to see what Kenji's up to today out of impulse. I'm curious if he has any plans, since everyone is doing something. Then again, I can picture him having built a soundproof shelter in his room, or possibly something like a fort complete with a no girls allowed sign, and with the girls crossed out and body crudely scrolled under, scrawled underneath it. <laughs> oh, don't sneeze. That would be annoying to edit out. <laughs> Knocking on his door, which is luckily devoid of any kind of sign, I hear again the unsettling clicking of at least ten locks being pulled back. The door opens up a crack. Oh boy, howdy, I hope, I hope I have not messed this up. I don't know where I went wrong. I felt like I made all the right choices. Was I supposed to? No, I thought Lily liked that I took her side. Who is it? You're supposed to ask that before you open the door. No, oh, it's you. Damn, it's early. It's not really that early. What is it, man? Nothing. Was just gonna ask you what you're gonna do today. Half the school's out there already. Out where? Why? What? 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 Is today special? Why are they there? Who are? I can hear them. It's loud. Don't tell me. Has the invasion begun? 
He suddenly looks more alarmed. What day is it, man? Yeah, I guess you can't see the big wooden booths outside and people selling stuff. The hell are you talking about? I have my curtains closed all- <laughs> That voice crack, though. I have my f curtains closed at all times to thwart the snipers. Uh, it's the festival. You know that, right? Oh, shit, that's today? Ah, damn. Ah, damn, damn it. I can't believe I forgot. I don't have my fort finished yet. This is bad. This is going to be a very bad day. It's good you told me this, man. This is going to be a bad day. Why? Oh, man, they're going to be everywhere. The people, outside my window, socializing. Kenshi rubs his temples nervously, suddenly looking very ill. It's going to be loud as hell. Damn. And I was going to go out today, but now it's ruined. Everything is ruined. This is awful. This sucks. This sucks! The hell? This really sucks. I can't go anywhere now. There's nowhere to run. Kenji seems nervous. You could even say he's majorly freaking out. I can't believe this. So that's what today was. Damn. And I couldn't even prepare for it. I couldn't even brace myself, and now it's here and I can't do anything. You should have told me this earlier, dude. I mean, at least I know, but I could have known earlier. Imagine what I could have accomplished. Sorry, I thought you knew. So I guess you're not going to do anything today? The weather's even good. Yesterday was really windy, so I thought today would be cold. It's not, though, so there's no reason to just stay inside. Yeah, you should check the festival out. Kenji groans and covers his face with his hands. Ah, no, no! I can't do it. They'll eat me alive out there, I know it! That has to be a joke. But he said it with such a straight face. Relatively straight. What are you going to do? I believe this is the exact moment of dialogue where I find out if I have messed up royally or not. We should hang out in here. You can help me build my fort. We might still make it if we, if we work together. What am I going to do? I don't have any plans. In hindsight, that's really stupid. Maybe I should have... No. Maybe I should have asked the girl out. Then again, all things considered, I don't think I could have done anything like that. It's only my first week. Oh my god, where did I mess up? Oh, I'm so mad now. A week that I have wasted being awkward around almost everyone, stumbling all over myself trying to get the hang of this place. Thinking about it, what have I accomplished? Who would I have even asked? Damn. Oh my god. Ugh. I got the bad route. I, I got the bad route. Katawa Shoujo route map. I hope I have it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. View image. Where did I go wrong? Okay. Hmm. Okay, I feel like I got all that. I don't know. I'm gonna need to figure this stuff out later, but we might as well finish this up, I suppose. Damn, it seems that Kenji is my only realistic option for a date today. This is the most depressing thing that has happened to me since I had a heart attack because a girl confessed her love to me. Can't be helped. I don't really know. I don't have anything, I guess, but a fort seems a bit excessive. You sure you don't want to go outside? It's not like visitors won't come to the dorms today. He looks thunderstruck by this revelation. Damn, you may have a point. This place is not safe today. We must find somewhere to hide in. He falls silent for a moment, thinking. The roof. What about it? We're going to hide out on the roof for today. It's the perfect place. Nobody ever goes up there. Meet me there in one hour. I have to prepare. Alright, well I'm just going to finish this up. I know exactly how this is going to go down and I am not happy. He slams the door shut. And the lock's click closed. Damn, what the hell is wrong with Kenji? And to think, I'm now going along with this craziness. Makes me depressed. Feel like I'm a failure. You are a fail. No, he saw, I'm sorry. I'm a failure. Once I step outside, the din of the crowd greets me. The whole school is bustling with activity. There are stalls everywhere, and the crowd swarming between them is considerable. I didn't expect the festival would attract so many visitors. I have to admit that the people in charge of decorating the place put a lot of effort into it, and it really shows. 
People seem to be enjoying themselves, and the atmosphere is colorful, bright, and happy. That is, if I weren't suddenly in such a foul mood. At the moment, it's more annoying than anything else. Well, nah, it can't be helped. I decide to stick with my original plan and eat, and then I guess I have to at least see what Kenji is up to on the roof. No, you don't. I do a slow circle around the grounds to kill some time, looking at the stalls, but not feeling like playing any of the games anymore. The garish colors grind my eyes, and I feel more and more ill by the minute. I can't even decide what I want to eat, and the large selection combined with the masses of energetic festival visitors isn't helping. I just head towards the nearest stall that seems to offer something halfway edible, and get in line. Turns out to be noodles. It also turns out to be not very good. Well, at least it's nourishment. It's not like I demand anything else at this point. As I stir my disagreeable noodles, I idly wonder what the others are doing right now. Shizune and Misha are definitely somewhere organizing things. I'd better steer clear of them. I guess they wouldn't forgive me so easily for leaving them alone with this thing. I expect Emmy to be buzzing all over the place, being depressingly cheerful. There's no chance to find her, but no chance to avoid her either, so it doesn't matter. Lily would probably be helping her class with that festival event, and entirely too busy for another's company. Hanukkah wouldn't want to talk to anyone anyway, either keeping to herself or helping Lily. Dean should be tending to her mural, and probably being unhelpful to any hypothetical interested parties. Did I somehow find myself on the Dean route and just turn it down when I said I wasn't interested in art club? Strange. Going there for some peace and quiet, it seems like the nicest option of the above, but then again, I can't see having art forced on me raising my mood either, so I'll pass. While I was lost in thought, my food seems to have disappeared, and so is my hunger. I guess I just blocked out the experience of eating, which should be a good thing. Satiated but unsatisfied, I turn to walk towards the main school building. An hour has almost passed already. The crowd is even thicker in here than it was outside. I'm really hoping that at some point, the one I was trying to go for is just going to come out, but I know it's not. There was supposed to be a choice about me going to the library. But then Emmy showed up, and so that's why I think that I messed up and somehow got on the Dean route. I could have sworn there should have been an option at that hallway to go to the library or go find Lily. Or go to the library or go find Lily, if that's not what I said. I don't remember anymore. The hallways are almost unbearable, and I don't even dare think what it's like inside the classroom. I head up the stairs to my destination. The roof. Thankfully, the door at the top isn't locked, but now there's a handwritten sign on it. Off limits. Don't mind if I don't. The festival noise is surprisingly muted up here, and the rooftop looks deserted, as expected. Near a place where the cyclone fence has collapsed, there's a pile of blankets that seems oddly out of place. Wait, did that pile just move a little? That would be strange, as there's no wind at all. I carefully stick my hand out, and give it an experimental prod. Ah! <laughs> Startled, I jump back. Who is it? God damn it, Kenji, it's me. God damn it, Kenji, is pretty much what I want to say to myself right now. I'm like, how did I mess up and get here? Oh, damn, you scared me, man. So what are we doing up here? We're having a picnic. What? <laughs> yeah, I have blankets, pretzels, and whiskey. This is the ultimate setup, man. Whiskey? Aren't you a bit too young to drink alcohol? I'm 20, you know. You're not. I am, and so are you. What? That's absurd. Hey, at least you get something out of it. All I get is this bottle of whiskey. He's rambling incoherently, but I decide to play along. So why do you have a bottle of whiskey? My mom couldn't come visit for the festival, so she sent me some expensive single malt instead. A likely story. Want some? It's not like I have anything to lose. This day can't possibly get worse. I'm up here with a, just a, an absolute absurd human being, so actually, yeah, there's no way it can get any worse. Why not? We sit down on the pile of blankets Kenji apparently dragged up here. He produces an almost full bottle of whiskey and passes it to me. You didn't even bring glasses? No. This is not some romantic princess picnic, what the hell, man? This is a manly picnic. No glasses. No napkins. Whiskey only. The beverage of true men. Whatever. And pretzels. I take a closer look at the bottle. 
Twelve-year-old single malt whiskey, as he said. Shrugging my shoulders, I take a swig. It burns my throat like acid, but the taste isn't unpleasant. I feel it going straight to my head, and the aftertaste lingers in the back of my mouth, craving for another swig. We should outline our counteroffensive and trash talk women here where they can't hear us. Damn, I forgot to bring my graphs. I decide to play a drinking game with myself. Every time Kenji mentions female conspiracy, I take a swig. Four or five hours, or possibly several days later, I lost track. Shouldn't feel bad, man. Ease the fuck up. Seriously, seriously. I am relaxed, god damn it. I'm telling it as I see it. Think about it. When did housing and land start becoming more and more expensive? When women began entering the workforce because it created two income nuclear families. Yeah, I forgot my grasp, but you'll just have to take my word for it. Women are connected to the decay of all society. I see. That's kind of hard to believe. Even if I say that, somehow, everything Kenji says seems to make more sense now. It all fits together, but I don't know if it's because he can explain things more clearly when drunk, or because I understand everything better when drunk. No, man, think. Think. Think of the dimp deeper implications. People could afford to stay, start saying, oh, well, since two members of the family are now earning money as opposed to one, they can surely afford something like rising costs of ownership. I see your point, but land in Japan has always been expensive. And the price of land generally goes up when a country starts undergoing industrialization. But no, it's because of women. Correlation equals causation, you know. I thought correlation didn't equal causation. Whatever, maybe you're right. I'm always right. Yeah, I bet women created industrialization, too, to cover their tracks. How diabolical. So yeah, everyone can go fuck themselves. He stands up, impressing me because I'm fairly sure I couldn't even if I wanted. He yells extremely loudly as if he's lost the concept of volume. I wince, and almost want to cover my ears. Ah, how nice it would have been if I could have been down there, but no. You see, thinking like that is a trap, and think you're missing out on something, but at the end of the road there's nothing but despair. Kenji snatches the bottle back and leans back his head, attempting to pour the alcohol into, the, into his mouth, but just ends up drenching himself in it. Damn it! See, my aim is terrible, and the bad thing about drinking is that it only gets worse the longer you go. Today is the day of despair. His voice immediately drops to almost a whisper but he starts talking much faster than before, slightly slurring his words from the whiskey. As he talks, he waves the bottle around, spilling some of it here and there. Yeah, you know, you know what was the most shocking event in my life? I have a hazy recollection of him telling me about the second most shocking event in his life, which was a bird pooping on his head. I don't have particularly great expectations of this, but I nod at him to continue anyway. You wouldn't think it, but I had a girlfriend here once. I think it was last year. Yeah, I just blew your mind, huh? See, I never told that to anyone. It's true. The thought does blow my mind. Suddenly, I want the bottle. I take it from Kenji and knock back as much as I can. I was more innocent back then, and I thought she was sane, unlike most women. But then one day, we engaged in... sexual intercourse. It was pretty okay, but then immediately following the event, that is the point of all such things, such something strange and scary happened. He throws himself against the fence, leaning on it, his eyes narrowed. I started feeling incredibly tired and sleepy. It isn't normal, man, what the fuck? I mean, normally that would be a high-tension, adrenaline-pumping moment of anyone's life, but my energy levels were dropping like a brick. Something sinister was in the works, I could feel it. That's when I knew that women are dangerous, sapping the life force of all men through the one commodity that is almost solely theirs to control. Sickening. Yeah, you're better off, dude. Kenji was right. This really is the day of despair, mainly because I'm up here with Kenji. Gotta study the map after this. I drink more to avoid having to process what he just said. Now I am the last sane man in an insane world. When other people realize it, it will be a war. A great war between men and the forces of feminism. But the problem is that not all men would fight on my side. 
Shit sucks. I could set the bar kinda low. Any men are fine. But not the dudes raised by their mom or their sister, that's for sure. And nobody <laughs> to dick girl porn. Oh my god. Ha. <laughs> that situation seems unlikely to me. Like, it wouldn't happen. Like, like, it's not very likely to happen. The alcohol must be working. Regardless, I still feel depressed that I'm up here today. I wasn't really looking forward to the festival with the same excitement as the rest of the school, but still. It would have been nice to have gone with someone. From up here, it certainly sounded like everyone's having fun. Maybe I'm missing out. It's just that there was no one I could have gone with. Or maybe there was. So many opportunities. Looking back on it now, I must have squandered so many of them. Damn, this is true despair. Worst part is that sometimes I feel like I have no choice in my life, you know? Like I never have a chance to make a decision. Shit just happens. Like it was all pre-programmed. Like fate or something. Like there's no way I can have a say in what I do. Quick! Ask me a question! Uh... Now! I can't really... See? This is just another example of it. Damn. Shit. Damn. Do you see? Now I wanna- Oh, I didn't even read that. Whoops. My finger twitched and I clicked. You can read that yourself, right? Damn, man, you failed me. Failed me for the last time, jerk. He slides to his knees and then falls over onto his side, lying on the gravel of the roof. Hey, are you okay? No, I'm not okay. Can't you see I'm in despair? He's speaking in a sarcastic tone. Suddenly, Kenji sits up, clumsily pats himself clean, and puts his hand out towards me to reach for the bottle. I put it in his hand. The hell? Damn, you, you killed almost the entire bottle. See, it's like I have no options in life. Is this how it's going to be for the rest of time? Well, I'm pretty sure it's not going to be like that for the rest of time. Whatever he's talking about, my head is spinning. I get up and lean against the fence, hoping it'll help me focus a little. Yeah, I know. We have to fight the power with all we got. It's the only way to live. You're an alright guy. This brotherly bond is what keeps me going in these dark times. We should go trolling women. Oh, we should not. Rolling women? What? What? Trolling women. Trolling for women. But we have to do it now before I lose this alcohol-related courage. He's gesturing wildly. Madly, even. I take a step backward. He takes a step forward. What's the matter with you? Not in the mood for love? Uh, to be frank, no. Take another step backward. He takes another step forward. He leans in extremely, uncomfortably close. The hell? Stop leaning in like that. It bothers me. Leaning in like what? Hey, you shouldn't lean against the fence like that. It's kind of unsafe. I try to move away from Kenji, but my balance isn't so good. Reeling from the dizziness, I grab at one of the fence posts, but then feel it give way as soon as I put my weight on it. This isn't good. Though my alcohol-addled brain doesn't seem to be quite capable of registering why. Kenji's face seems to be coming smaller, though. Which is a bit of a relief. Much smaller, in fact. And rapidly so. Seems to be a bit of wind now. Somehow it makes me feel almost weightless. I feel dazed. Like my mind has gone blank. I am... Falling? I can see the night sky as I turn over in the air. The bottle floats out of my fingertips and disappears into thin air as I fall. I realize that this is the fitting end to a truly, truly bad day. And there you have it. I suck at Katawa Shoujo. Jeez. That's rad. It's rad. I love it. Alright, well... Pfft. Extras. Gallery? Is that how I get it? Yeah. Things didn't go so well, believe it or not. So, uh... What's this? Meds. Cool. 20 further images not unlocked. Wow, really? You don't say. Oh, man, I messed that up. But you can see at the gallery, there's like the one picture there. That's the bad ending, that one picture. Man, oh man, all right, well, I'm definitely not gonna leave this series here. I said I was gonna do one playthrough, but not like that. Not like that. 
I'm supposed to remind you to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Until next time, when we try again and probably follow a guide this time on Katawa Shoujo. That's the fist pump part. Goodbye.